Hello, my darlings, and welcome to Soul Space, my beautiful little import on the podcast spectrum that helps you with everything from paranormal to spiritual to alien to the afterlife to mindfulness, you name it, it is on here. So if you want to have divine knowledge and you want to understand everything from tarot to, do you know what, I can't even think of a T word, let's just say to ghosts. I know it doesn't sound very poetic, but hey ho, then you're in the right place. It's Nikki Allen here, and I want to welcome all my new listeners as well from all over the world. Thank you for your messages. I'm going to ask you one little question. Have you ever thought, I can't do life anymore? Have you ever felt so devastated by a loss or something that's happening in your life that you just don't want to carry on? Or have you just literally come to a halt in your life and you think everything is meaningless? Would you know what? Keep listening, especially if you've gone through this, because there is a psychiatric and spiritual term for it. And it's known as the dark night of the soul. Now, this isn't going to be a, oh my God, feel sorry for me. It absolutely isn't. But I need to share some of my experience with you to help you understand that I get it. The most infuriating thing, and I remember this as a detective, as a bereavement trained detective, dealing with murder victim families, rape victims, when they said, you haven't got a clue what it's like. And I say, well, yeah, actually I do. And I feel like empathy and, you know, going through these situations and things that we go through in life are brilliant in helping others to get through it. You know, there's nothing worse than someone who says, well, the textbook says you need to do this. <laughs> it's always best to listen to someone who knows. And believe me, I've been through it. If you've read my book, I mean, myself and I, you're going to hear a lot of what's in that book today. So I apologize in advance. If you haven't read it, get on it because it's brilliant. <laughs> I do love a shameless plug. I do. Now, let's talk about the dark night of the soul. I had no idea about this term or phrase. And when I actually was told it um, halfway through my recovery, which I'll talk about in a minute, I just thought, my God, I'm home. Someone gets it. You know, I'm not alone. I, there are millions of people that have gone through this and lots of people that know about the dark night of the soul once you mention it. So what is the dark night of the soul? The dark night of the soul is when everything in your life becomes completely meaningless. Your job, your work, your love life, your relationship, your family, everything has turned black. It's normally triggered by either a loss or perhaps you've lost your job or lost your house. Or sometimes it really is just a buildup of depression that leads to a massive crisis of life where most of you who never even would have thought of taking your life think, do you know what? I'm better off dead. And I have certainly thought that for many, many years. Yes, years. And so that's what it's all about. It's about everything slamming down in your face and not working. You know, it's not just the toaster blown up. It's everywhere you look, everything. It's like you set yourself into an illusion or a disillusion of failure and darkness. And the problem with that is you invert attracting that. So you make your life even worse. You don't mean to, but it just literally implodes into this mask of negativity, meaninglessness. I'm going to use that a lot. It's just feeling like you're not worthy of anything. You're not worthy to be loved. You're not worthy to have a family. You're not worthy to be esteemed at work. You're not worthy of absolutely anything at all in this material plane. You've lost your faith. You've lost anything you ever had before in a belief of a higher power. And you are in a whole world of doom and dismay. I refer to it as the dark abyss of my life in my book. And for those that don't know, I had a road accident. My God, how many times I say that? I don't, do you know what? I should start tagging it and then giving myself a pound. Because if I gave myself a pound, <laughs> I could be spending, spending money on such lovely things. Um, so I'll tell you about my dark night of the soul. And everybody says to me, how are you so upbeat? How do you keep so positive? I'm going to tell you how as well. I'm going to tell you how. So I had two dark nights of the soul. The first one is not what I want to talk about, but it, when I literally got retired from the police service, that was hell on earth. But I was 
very quickly gathered up by my guide, Juliana, who then put me on a ride of my life as Nikki Allen, the psychic medium. So that wasn't so much the long, treacherous path that I trod when I had my road accident. Now, as I say, I will be repeating a bit about my book. So you've mostly heard this already, but I will be putting extras in, readers of me, myself and I, available at Amazon. <laughs> you shameless person, Nikki. Anyway, at the time I had, I was working um, in the highest point of my industry with the likes of Colin Fry, Derek Acora. Um, I was touring, I had book offers, I was work, I was writing in every magazine going, spiritual magazine were asking me for articles, everything was sold out from my seminars, my workshops, my circles, my evenings of mediumship, but people couldn't get enough of me and I loved it. Now, the thing is, is that I was still keeping it real back then, but the difference was, is that within myself, I hated myself. This is through years of abuse, years of abandonment, and I had a lot of issues going on, um, a lot of demons prowling away, and I was desperately trying to keep them down, hiding under the badge of a detective and then under Nikki Allen. So it was no surprise um, when this took place. I was with the wrong partner. He was evil, um, totally dishonest. He was stealing from me. Um, my family tried to tell me, and I pushed my family away. Everything was so... In discord, it was unbelievable. And for someone that was, you know, preaching and delivering messages from the divine and helping people on a global scale to not to hate themselves, there's something wrong with that picture, you know. But I thought it's fine as long as everybody else is fine. Typical empath, as long as everybody else is safe and fine, I don't give a shit about myself. So when the accident came, I saw that I was going to have an impact the morning I woke up, but I thought, I don't know when it is, you know, don't know when it's going to happen. I'm just going to go with it. It felt like it was inevitable that I had to accept that it was going to happen. Ordinarily, if I see something really disturbing, I go back up and go, wow, wow, hang on a minute. You need to show me what this is all about. And I get more explanation. For this point, though, for some reason, I just went with it. I just, you know, I didn't consciously know, but I feel that, my soul, excuse me, knew that this was an in inevitable part of my past, an inevitable part of my future awakening. And when about literally 13 hours later, 14 hours later, the car smashed into the side of me, um, I thought, this is it. This is something big's happened because I couldn't move. I was in agonizing pain. Bearing in mind that I had broken anything, the paramedics had to get me out. The pain was beyond excruciating. It felt like I was in a molten, hot lava of pain with every single nerve, fiber, bone, joint, sinew, tendon. It was horrific. Um, and long story short, I slept for a couple of days and I realized that something really, really horrific had happened to my body. I couldn't think of words. I couldn't communicate. I woke up with my eye closed one day. I couldn't hear. I couldn't understand what's on the television. I was so exhausted that I honestly thought they'd missed something and I was dying. And I, I, my God, did I welcome death. It was horrific. Absolutely horrific. And this is a word out to the millions missing um, and to all the people that suffer with ME, chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. It is a disease that is a bitch from hell. And I remember before I actually got diagnosed, people saying, I've got ME and I'm thinking, I'll oh, get over yourself. It's yuppie flu. That's what we used to call it here in the UK in the 80s. And I just thought they were like too lazy to actually do anything to help themselves. My God, how wrong was I? So what then happened was I thought, I can't lose Nikki Allen. I can't lose Nikki Allen. So I then started to attend shows and there was even pictures of me. And at the time I thought it was really funny. But now I look back and think, my God, Nikki, you needed to stop and look after yourself. But I had no love for myself. You know, just tick these boxes off as I go along, darlings. So I bet some of you are totally getting what I'm saying here. And so I thought it was funny to take photos of me sitting on a settee doing a show for people. You know, I would rock, cry my eyes out in agonizing pain getting to a venue. I would then take shitloads of codeine, 
um, vodka, Red Bulls to try and null the pain and try and get me into a place that I could bring the spirit people through. It was so unhealthy and I feel embarrassed and almost mortified. I'm saying this to you all. But as you know, I keep it real. And it's not worth me saying, oh, yes, yeah, spirit world is amazing. Oh, yeah, I'm great. I'm, I've been cured. It's all no, it's all bullshit. Basically, I'm trying to say to you that I was in the wrong place with such wrong intentions about myself. It was horrific. And I also knew that I was with an asshole. Excuse me. Well, I don't know why I'm saying excuse my friend. So I say it as it is. He was just like literally like a little flea biting off a dog. You know, he was a parasite. And I thought, well, if I don't work, nothing's going to get paid. I'm going to lose the house. So I held on for a year. I held on on that material, egotistical frequency, scared that I was going to lose my house, scared that I was going to lose my, you know, Nikki Allen symbol of love that everybody loved, even though I hated myself. You know, that's how I got my love. That's how a lot of actors, actresses, you know, you see how depressed they are in real life and how much crisis they're in, their addictions. Look at, bless him, Matthew Perry recently. And, you know, that's, that's what I was. I was a wreck. Of, you know, when I was off stage, I hated myself and I just didn't like anything that was going on. On stage, I was suddenly loved and that love I ate up so greedily. It was ridiculous because I thought, well, if they love me, I must be reasonable at some point. So to lose Nikki Allen, the symbol, the status, the name, uh, was beyond anything I could possibly enter into my head. It wasn't going to happen. So I dragged myself to intimate evenings where I used to go to people's houses and just sit in a, a chair and rattle off, you know, their, their spirit people to them, go home and then sleep permanently, wetting myself, incontinent, crying, depressed, um, in agonizing pain that no, none of the pharmaceutical crap that they gave me worked. They just gave me more and more and more. So I turned into a zombie. Um, nothing was getting done in the house. Um, and I literally didn't even think for one minute, stop, love yourself, Nikki, didn't even for one minute. And so I literally carried on until I did a show um, in Devon and it was the most negative, most hard working show I've ever done in my life. The energy in the room was horrific and I should have given everybody the money back to be honest with you. I felt mortified and halfway through, I collapsed. I went out um, for the half interval and I collapsed on the floor. I was shivering, but I was red hot inside. Um, I was soaked, soaked to the bone, sweating, um, had tremors, and I couldn't even physically stand up. And what did I do? I gave myself more codeine, more tramadol. I had a vodka Red Bull and I got back up on that stage because it was, I felt, you know, it was just like I felt like I had to do it. I couldn't let people down. I was a people pleaser. But when I came off of stage, I realized that's it. I can't do this anymore. I have to surrender. And someone said to me, actually, when they came off, Nikki, you can't keep doing this. You're going to die. You're going to kill yourself doing this. You can't do it anymore. And I then got my diagnosis from the GP, which was in the January. Uh, this was like a year later saying, yeah, you know, we've gone through all the tests, ME and fibromyalgia. And they kind of, they're kind of very dismissive of this condition, which obviously our MPs are fighting for at the moment because I don't want to turn this into an ME CFS thing, but Jesus, um, they just literally throw pills at you and sell you pop and that's it. And you've got to deal with it. And suddenly you lose everything. I lost my house. I had um, invested in a holiday home in Devon. That went. Um, I obviously... All the magazines dried up as quick as a dry thing under a sun. Um, and none of the big mediums wanted to know me anymore. Most of my fans just disappeared because they couldn't get readings from me anymore. But the solid, beautiful souls that have stayed with me until now remains. However, I lost everything. My social standing, my career, my identity, my home, my security, my ex. Um, Stole my money while I was laying in bed, um, 65 grand, and I ended up in debt. So I was in debt. I had bailiffs knocking on a door, phoning me. The bank don't give a flying crap if you've had an accident. So everything was taken from me. And, you know, I literally ended up sofa hopping on friends' beds without a home. I was homeless for eight months. And I literally had a few dustbin bags. I had my two little dogs and me, and that was it. Now, when you are faced with that, 
and this is why this happens to you guys. When you are faced with yourself, and this is why we had such a problem during the lockdown. The lockdown to me was a breeze. Oh my God. It's, it was no different to my normal life. You know, I've had 11 years of sitting on my own and being isolated. Yes, I had. And um, yeah, that was a walk in the park, but that created a lot of the dark nights of the soul. And people can handle having to face themselves because humans tend to use alcohol, friends, social life, plastic surgery, careers, identity, you name it, whatever it is, we all feed on things to make ourselves feel better. And that, ladies and gents, is where we are going wrong. We need to start at the core of our soul with ourselves because there is nothing on this earth that's going to make you feel any better. You know, oh, if I won the lottery, I'd be happy. Oh, if I had a different job, I'd be happy. Oh, if I lived in that house, I'd be happy. No, no, no. Be happy. If you are sitting in a shit pit with not a penny to your name, be happy. So let's see how I got there, shall we? Darlings, just to let you know, if you go to my website, nikkiallen.co.uk, a pop-up will pop up. Yes, it will. It'll pop up. And it will give you the opportunity to join my subscribe tribe where you will receive newsletters. These give you loads of personal anecdotes of what's happened in the week. I also love to give you giveaways and give you inspiration, spiritual talk, and also a beautiful little angel card reading at the end. It really is building into a wonderful community, just the newsletter in itself. Don't forget I'm on YouTube as well, where I give you loads of different videos to help you in your spiritual development and awareness of the angels. And just an exclusive for you, there'll be a new Channeling Heaven program where I shall be literally going up to the Crystal Palace and bringing direct messages to you from the angel realms and the spirit world to help humanity. And on top of that, if you really do want to take spiritual development a stage further, have a look at my shop where I provide many guided meditations for your development. We have the 10-hour tarot course, the Prism Living Spiritual Development course. We have the QR tarot cards, which are wonderful, and loads of other stuff, including my books if you'd like a signed version. So pop over to the shop area of my website where you can just delight yourself in buying all sorts of wonderful spiritual things. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And I look forward to connecting with you both in my tribe on YouTube and through my newsletter. So I had the diagnosis. I had absolutely nothing. Um, my two little dogs used to look up at me and I used to think, Jesus Christ, what am I going to do? I then ended up, this is, I'm not going to give you the whole book because I've just given you the spoilers for everything here. But I ended up in bed for five years. Five years. Take that in. Five years. That was the dark night of my soul. So there was nothing but blackness, nothing but depression and God heart wrenching pain in every dimension, spiritually, emotionally, physically, materially. I hated everything. I hated me. I blamed myself for being in this position because I hadn't been with the dickhead that was driving the car who then had the crash. It went on and on and on. I was given everything you can imagine from the doctors. That, as I say, they just leave you. Thank God for the MPs that are fighting our corner at the moment in Members of Parliament to try and give us some recognition. But they just threw bottles of morphine at me and God knows what, off your, off your pot and shut up moaning because it's not really a disease. That's how most doctors treat it. You always see their eyes roll when you sit in front of them. And I'm not joking you now, darlings. I sat there and I looked at that morphine bottle. My God, every single day did I want to drink the whole bottle. I craved death. It would end the agonizing pain and torment that I was going through. It would end everything. And I had a seer, a Turkish seer, once say to me, your dogs will save your life. And they bloody did. Because I had a dog walker. I managed to get a dog walker. Um, so they were looked after. So please don't think they were just left there rotting with me. Um, but when I was laying there, they would come back from their walk, get on the bed, and they would lay on my chest and just look at me. And they will cuddle me and they would lick me. And Mia Blesser is now on the Rainbow Bridge. And I know she's still with me spiritually now. But at the time, I had no spiritual acknowledgement. You know, some people might say, oh, yeah, but, you know, Nikki, you were born into generations of mediums. You had all that spiritual knowledge. Did I bugger it? I literally hated them. I closed them off. 
because I thought, how dare they put me in this position where all I've wanted to do is serve humanity as a police officer and then as a psychic medium and spiritual counsellor, if you like. How dare they do this to me? And so I just lived in hate. Suicide, oh God, suicide was just, oh, it was going to be bliss. But I could not do it because as a police officer, I'd seen bodies left with their dogs after a few days. And I know because I'd isolated myself that no one was going to find me until God knows when. The only person I saw, if I was downstairs at any point, um, was the postman. I could not bear conversation with anybody because I couldn't understand what they were saying. I didn't have the energy to talk. I wouldn't pick the phone up. So I literally lived with me alone day after day, wetting myself, completely incontinent and just chucking another towel on top of that. Um, the doctors wouldn't listen. I had no care and it was horrific. I lived on biscuits and crisps because I couldn't cook anything. Um, so now and then, you know, if I was brave enough, I'd say to someone, oh yeah, can you just get some snacks? Pretending that I was eating normally, but those snacks are the ones that I would have as my main meals. Um, and my whole body suddenly turned, you know, my whole brain changed as well to, I don't like tea anymore. I don't like caffeine, dairy, gluten, sugar, fat, everything just turned on its ass. And, you know, mine was the debt. Mine was the debts. You know, some people say, oh, it's very stressful going for a divorce. Well, it's very stressful moving home. I had the whole bloody lot thrown at me. Do you know what I mean? And then one day I remember laying in bed and I know it was driven by some different higher power, but I would not acknowledge that because I hated that. I hated them. I hated them with a vengeance. God, angel, spirit, well, what a load of crap. I hate you all. I hate you. I hate myself. I hate everything. And I remember laying there and a thought process came into my head and it just said, look, I'm not being funny, love, but, you know, can you just do something? Either kill yourself or do something. And I thought, well, I can't kill myself because I can't leave my babies, Daddy and Mia. And I thought, I'm not doing that to them, which I suppose wasn't even about me. It was about them again, typical empath again. And then I thought, I'm going to surrender. There's got to be something. I couldn't have, I couldn't have spent my whole life hallucinating my dad, you know, my spirit dad, hallucinating all of these spirit people I speak to, hallucinating and making up all of the magnificent messages I got from a source and brought, you know, absolute bliss to people and joy and comfort of the afterlife. So I thought, right, well, do you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. And so I did. I was naked in the middle of the night. It was freezing cold and I just surrendered myself to the full moon. Like a virgin sacrifice. And I went, right, you know, and it was nothing amazing. I didn't go, oh, I'm true thou, I call upon thou, or none of that. It was, do you know what? I've got nothing left. I can't kill myself. So I surrender myself to you. Please help me. Please help me. And the following day, a hamper arrived. Christ knows who it was from. I didn't know who it was from. And it was full of food and fruit and fresh veg. And then the journey began. I don't want to talk too much about the miracles that took place, but all I'll say is I had angel visitation, um, guides, spirit people, and I was basically taken through the most harshest spiritual boot camp of my life, and I was spiritually awakened. On top of that, they taught me how to cosmic order, how to love myself, how to make sure that I always put myself first. Excuse me, they're here. I, I, if you know me, you know that they make me burp. Thank God it isn't the other end. But they bring energy to my um, heart chakra, my throat chakra. So please excuse me if you're hearing this, you don't know who I am. If you don't know who I am, how dare you? I'm joking. And I literally was taken through all my exes. I was, I was, I was taught how to love myself, they, the, the angels. And I knew they were there because the dogs reacted to them. So as soon as anybody came in the room, they were, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm glad I'm not making it up. Even down to the medication I had to take, um, meditation, self-care, self-love, bang, bang, bang. And if I went off of the track, bang, they'd pull me back again. My guide explained to me that I'd been through the dark night of the soul and that unfortunately the pain I'd experienced taking myself off the path, I had to go back through it to get back on it. And it was hell, don't get me wrong. But you know what? After that time and after the fact that 
you know, doctor had told me I would never walk again, that I'd be in a wheelchair and I might be in bed for the rest of my life. Be very wary of what doctors tell you because they can actually condition you to accept what they're telling you. And half the time, they're just giving the same old spiel. Don't let them tell you what your body's going to do. You tell your body what it's going to do. And at this juncture, you're mostly going to say, yeah, but we know you, Nikki. We know you still got ME. We know you still got fibromyalgia. Yeah, I do. But I don't know why I've still got it. But you know what? I'm still functioning. I'm still here doing this now. And I'm still attracting more and more people over the world to help them. So if the sacrifices my physical body doesn't want to get well after everything I've tried, fair play. But what I will tell you is, is I've never loved myself so much. I've never had such strong boundaries. I've never had such beautiful people around me. I've never attracted so much luck. I cosmic ordered a house that I don't even pay for. It's paid for by the beach, which is my dream, which I thought I'd never have. So this isn't about, oh, follow me and miracles will come. This is about the fact that I have been down the worst rabbit hole of my life. And I never, ever wanted to come back. Believe me, I was dragged back, screaming, shouting and pulling my hair. I did not want to come back and be Nikki Allen. Oh, love and light. I didn't want to do it. But now I feel it. I know it. It's in me. And I can't stop it. I can't stop needing to reach every dark corner in the universe and try and help whoever's there who wants it. So if you have gone through something like this, perhaps not even, you know, this deep, it doesn't matter what it is. A crisis is your crisis. Some people can sell through someone that's passed over. Other, you know, passed over. Other people, it literally stops them in their tracks for life. You know, we all deal with crisis and trauma differently. But the first thing I urge you to do is just look up Dark Night of the Soul. Just Google it. Just Google it. And... I bet you you'll go, oh, my God, that's me. That's the first thing, okay? Eckhart Tolle, he, he um, describes it magnificently. And his book about miracles is also perhaps something you might want to read. But it is a valid thing. It is acknowledged as a, a really horrific thing to go through. But here's the good news, ladies and gents. Here's the good news. It is happening to you or has happened to you to bring you to the biggest and most beautiful awakening of your life. So all of these cliche memes that say ride the storm and wait for the rainbow or whatever it is, do you know what I mean? Dance in the rain because the storm will end. I don't know. I can't remember what they are now. Um, but, you know, all those ones, it really is ride through this, get through it and survive it because there will be a reason for it. And I see the, the dark night of the soul as an end of an old way of being and thinking and believing. So many people message me and email me all over the world telling me if it hadn't been for this, whatever it was, the dark night of the soul, I would not now be, be, be a Reiki healer. I would not now be um, a psychiatrist. I would not now be a counselor. I would not now do this. You have a mass awakening. So what happens is there is some despair in your soul that says, I can't do this anymore. And so you have this transition known as the dark night of the soul that then creates your new era of living, your new awakening. And suddenly synchronicity starts happening. You suddenly have an alignment to an angel frequency that you never believed in. And suddenly you get signs from the angels, feathers, names, numbers, numerology. Even today, even today, I swear to you, Five minutes before doing this, I thought, I've got absolutely no clue what I'm going to talk about. I'm so busy at the moment. So I just sent it up and went, guys, what do you want me to talk about? And bang, they wrote in my head, dark night of the soul. And I'm like, yeah, I, I can talk about it. But what do you want me to, you know, what do you want me to say on how to get people out of it? And then Oliver, who produces this, and we work hand in hand, partners in crime with a lot of the work that we do, including the 10-hour tarot course, the QR tarot, and everything else. We're both on a mission to bring love, light, and knowledge, esoteric knowledge to the masses. He sends me a message. <laughs> he sends me a message just as I said, well, what do you want me to tell them to do, right, to help them get, you know, recover and grow after they've had the night of, night of the, the um, dark night of the soul. And he just says, oh, look, I've just been shown this frequency. It's how to, like, readjust yourself after you've had trauma. I'm like, you are joking me. So the answer was from his guide, 555. 
frequency 555 has been given to you from the angel realms, from the ascended masters, from the guides. This is a frequency that your soul needs just to, is it's soul food to get you back onto a resonance after you've had a dark night of the soul. Okay. Google it, find it. I'm going to start doing some meditations on it and getting them on my website for you. Five, five, five. I'm telling you now, I'm making a prediction now, sound vibrant, sound frequency, sound healing is going to become bloody massive. Trust me on this, sound frequency. And so I know that that is part of what you need to be doing on a subconscious level, right? Press play and listen to that. Let, let it engulf your soul. The other things are all about self-love. And obviously everything's in my book if you want to, you know, see the list there. Um, but also I do loads of these videos to help you get back on track um, on my YouTube channel. But also just start with the love part. So surrender yourself first of all. Surrender yourself to a higher power. Accept what has happened. Move on from it. Grieve it. Move on from it. Like the death card, like the tower card in tarot. You've got to move with it. You've got to go with the flow. Not feel sorry for yourself, be a victim like I did for two years. Not sit there thinking, oh my God, that could have happened. Not I used to have this. Oh, don't get me wrong, I still do it. Don't get me wrong, I still do it. But it doesn't affect my soul or bring me down anymore. Get rid of the past. It's done. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Look for your future. How am I going to work with this new life I have? And then watch the magic take place. Surrender yourself. Watch the magic take place where you'll be led to people that will help you. You'll be in a situation where something will go boom. You think, oh, God, I've got to do that. You will start using your intuition, your inner compass, more than you've ever had in your whole life. And everything suddenly is so much easier because you're seeing the bigger picture. You're seeing that you are a soul incarnated down here on a human experience. And that was a dark night of the soul. And your soul has now been revamped, ready for your awakening. Wake up and listen to the signs. Wake up and watch the videos of people that can enlighten you. Wake yourself up. Start affirming yourself that you're going to wake up. Start looking in the mirror, telling yourself you love yourself. Start learning how to cosmic order. Start meditating. Start connecting to souls. And my God, your life will change so drastically and so easily. You'll think, why the hell didn't I do this before? Because you're asleep, darlings. That's all. You were just trudging along the dark, treacly, crappy path of life where you were just stuck in ego and materialism. As soon as this is dropped and you start waking your soul up to the higher chakra points, heart, throat, third eye, ch crown chakra, and you start connecting up there, it's like you are living a double life. It's like you're a double agent. You're down here doing the earth crap, but you're also getting voices, messages, synchronicity, and the most amazing miracles you will ever see from them as you go along. You could meet someone, you know, they hate you and you think, I really don't care. And you're, and, and you're looking at everybody up there, they go, oh, she's got an ego, hasn't she? Yeah, she's another little minion. And you just laugh. It's just... You find things, you don't get me wrong. Please don't think, oh, I think everything's great. I, of course, I get my tantrums. I get moody, get hormonal with menopause. That's my physical body. Do you know what I mean? Of course I do. I'm not running around like Snow White <laughs> with a blinking blue tit on my finger all the time. But do you know what? I have no more demons. I have nothing in me that says you're not worthy. You're crap. You're rubbish. Like I was told during my abusive years. Got none of that. Don't need it. I don't need to people please at all. I do this because I have a passion and it is my sole plan to bring my knowledge and my words to you. And what I'm absolutely loving as well is, is that even a tiny little part of my ego said, oh, I don't know if people are going to believe this because I've started channeling from the Crystal Palace. I've only done two on YouTube. And there was a little thing saying, mm. and do you know what? Julianne has predicted 2nd of November, way back when we did the video, to say that there was lots of flooding and devastation coming. He predicted Storm Kieran. I'm like, oh, that's quite good. And then during my channeling with my um, Archangel Ariel that I did, well, I didn't even know I was going to go and meet her. And the um, A word, you know, the thing that starts music? If I say it, she's going to talk, it's going to ruin the podcast. So that turned itself on to start playing music about eclipses. So look, um, total eclipse of the heart and it turns out this is a big year for eclipses and she also said that a lot of you'll be looking at a burgundy rose while you're watching this and hundreds and hundreds of people wrote in to say yes I was and so what they're doing is is they're trying to wake us up 
they're using me um, as a medium to wake you up. And I'm also getting massive signs whilst I'm doing the videos. The recent one I just did, the print turned itself on halfway through the show. So it's all good stuff. So get rid of your belief systems, get rid of your fears, get rid of the past if you've had that trauma and embrace the future with self-love, self-care every single day, every single day. I don't even have to think it anymore. Three things I'm grateful, grateful for before I even get out of bed. And then I think, what shall I do that will make me smile today? Right. And if I don't do it, I think, oh my God, it's like getting the rings on your eye watch, you know, do you know your activity rings? I'm like, oh my God, I haven't done it. I need to do something now. Whether it's a bath or I don't care, I'm going to have a bar of chocolate. I don't care. I'm going to have that chocolate or a walk by the sea or a spa treatment or whatever it is that floats your boat. I'm going to listen to my favorite music. I'm going to watch my favorite movie. I'm going to watch something that makes me laugh. I'm going to put on, I do this all the time, my essential oils for, you know, uh, well-being, bergamot, ylang ylang, lavender. I'm going to have a relaxation time. I'm going to turn my phone off for half an hour. I'm going to read my favorite book. I'm going to tell people to go away that I don't like. I'm going to move on from people that make me feel negative. negative. I'm going to join someone that's going to help me get rid of my addictions, whatever it is. Do it. Make your life easier. Make your life better. Make your life so beautiful that even just a bird singing makes your heart flood with love, contentment, and gratitude. Because now I am grateful for things that people don't even think of. Like the sun shining through my window now, and it's shining through the crystals, and I've got prisms illuminated all around me. That to me is beautiful and wonderful. And I love the fact that I'm here to be present, to see that light and to see the beautiful decoration around my room. I'm looking across to the most stunning lakelands and woodlands, knowing that to my left is the beach that I walk on most days to get my healing. Most people don't even think that. They think, oh, I want a fiver. That's good. Oh, I've done this. I've achieved that. That's not, that's not self-love and self-happiness and self-affirmation. Go within, darlings. And as I say, if you haven't already, join me on YouTube because I've got so many different videos there that can help you understand how to move on from the dark night of the soul. You can do this. If you're in it now, ride it like a bitch because I'm telling you it will end and something beautiful will come out of it, I promise you. And if you look back now, if it was ages ago, Look at what you gain from it. Look at where you are now because of it. And I promise you that you'll think, wow, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here now. So I really hope I've helped you. I hope that I've inspired you. I hope that I've given you some sort of hand-holding situation if you're there going through it now. And God bless you if you are because it is bloody horrible. I know it is absolutely horrific. And please, you know, if you are feeling suicidal, please reach out to the Samaritans, reach out to your GP, reach out to a trusted friend. Please don't isolate. Please tell someone. Please tell someone if you are in crisis. And I didn't do that. And I wish I had. I wish I'd reached out earlier and said, I'm hurting. Help me. Please don't isolate yourselves. Okay. I'm going to leave you with a very positive note, if I can, to say... There is always storms in our lives. And you know what? Just wait for the rainbow at the end because it will come. Colour, vitality, strength, focus and love will come back into your life. Surrender first. Accept your future as a bright new beginning and not a fearful restart of a horrible situation. Think bright. Think the future. And know that this was meant to happen and that you're one of the lucky ones that's been chosen to awaken to the magical mysteries of everything ethereal, celestial, and angelic. Give it a go. Is it gonna hurt? No, it's not. Until the next time, I've loved keeping it real. Take care, my darlings. Nikki Allen.